What's up everyone, it's Addicted to Nature, and today I'm going to be talking about how to manually pull out the um, eggs that you see here and the raisin myself, but if you can have the option, I want to talk about how to always leave it in with the parents, because look how diligent, look how awesome these parents are, if I can get them to come back here, come back to your babies. All right, there it is. And she's actually using, this is the girl, that's the mom. She's actually using her fins to sort of um, make that water current over the eggs where the fungus won't grow because of that fungus or bacteria or mold, none of that. And the dad's over here. He's actually helping out using his fins to fan the eggs and keep the mold away. A um, couple of good reasons on why you should move your fish out of the, or move your eggs out is because if they laid eggs in a community tank, which they have in this case. The other fish in the tank might eat them, and uh, the parents will guard these during the day, and it will stress the hell out of all your other fish, which is bad. Stress fish equals sick fish, right? But at night, the parents go to sleep, and the pleco will actually come over, and unfortunately, he will gobble up these eggs like popcorn chicken so you don't want that and take a look at that dad that's the golden one look what he's about to do here he actually uh, scared all the other angelfish in the tank down to that uh, little hole in the corner right there where they will belong for the next couple of weeks and we don't want that right because like I said stress fish equals dead fish and here's another shot of him you can take a look at the, ooh, they're actually really beautiful and they're really good uh, angelfish, but with this breeding pair in the tank, everybody else will get stressed out and including my Danios, including my Bettas, and especially my angelfish. So this is one of the reasons why we want to remove it. Another reason is because um, this is not set up. Look at that filter. There is no sponge filter on that. And even if you were to let them grow out and they weren't eaten, a sponge filter will suck them up. And then at this point, um, if I were to remove all the other fish and keep the parents in there, they'll probably get stressed out with all the netting going on and eat the eggs anyway. So what I decided to do is I took a scissor and I cut off that leaf with all the eggs on it at the bottom of the base and leave a little bit of a stem there. That's good because it's about to come into play in the next step that I'm about to show you. I try to show the camera, but it looks like the light washed it off, so it kind of sucks. And here we go. So over here, make sure to do a quick visual inspection. No uh, white eggs, any opaque looking eggs mean that it's not, it's not fertilized, it's unfertilized, and it will go bad, it will mold, it will have fungus, bacteria and it will hurt your other eggs. So you want to remove that with a set of uh, tweezers or anything like that. Scrape it off as soon as possible. Here's my setup though. I have a, a fry breeder tank and uh, I actually have a net breeder inside of that fry breeder tank. Here is a lead malleable plant weight. So just a plant weight, lead plant weight. You can bend it around, it's lead. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bend it over the stem of the plant. Because of that, um, it'll keep the leaf flow sunken, sunken, not floating, so the leaf sunken onto the bottom of the net breeder, which will come into play right after this. You want to drop it into the net breeder. You want to make sure that you keep the eggs uh, facing up so that they will not get scraped off by the net breeder. So the next part you're gonna do is set up your air stone. With your air stone set up, we can talk about the next part. And now I have the air stone in there. I have a little bit of java moss in there and that'll act as a clean for when the fry go out as wigglers or in the, and then afterwards when they're actually free swimming. So make sure the bubbles are now um, going up against the eggs, I've actually turned the eggs upside down so that the eggs are facing down. The leaf, back of the leaf is actually facing up now. That way the bubbles will come into contact with the eggs that will simulate sort of like the mother and the dad waving their fins around and keeping that water current going. Over the next couple of days, you'll notice that some eggs have dropped onto the bottom of the tank. That's totally okay. Remove that white one, I'll pick one in the front, but you see the two in the back 
Those are good. Those are actually, you can hold on to that. Just let them stay there. They'll be fine. And uh, this is the last uh, footage of my fry tank. There are no angel fish in here. Just a couple of guppies and some bettas. Uh, the bettas are the colorful ones. And the guppies are the, well, not so colorful ones. And uh, in the back, I do have a pleco. It's a bristle nose baby pleco in here. He's not aggressive. So that's why I'm keeping him with my fry. Thank you guys all so much for watching.